Hello and welcome to the Saturday Showdown brought to you by Marco's Pizza. I'm your host, Parker Stria. Uh, we are still, unfortunately, in Swain Hall. It has been treating us well, but we are very excited to get into Hartnett Hall very soon. We have a very exciting episode today for the Saturday Showdown. I'm going to start again like last time. I'm going to be interviewing the head coach of the football team. And then I do have a special guest who is going to be taking over the NSIC segment since Nicole could not be here today. And then we're going to wrap up the show with our Hot Topic segment. But without further ado, the Minot State Beavers football team is currently 0-4 on the season. After a low-scoring 7-0 defeat by the University of Sioux Falls last weekend, the Beavers are still looking to pick up their first win. Today, the Beavers are hosting a tough 3-1 Wayne State College team for Energy Day here in Minot. I'm now joined by Beaver head coach Ian Shields. Coach, how are you doing today? Well, we're doing well. We're excited to, to strap it on today to Wayne State. Thank you. Like this, last time we talked was two weeks ago, uh, right before the Minnesota Mankato game. So I just wanted to kind of bring that up really quick. Um, you unfortunately did lose 52 to 25, but I thought it was a very good outing for the team. Obviously not as bad of a loss as the Minot State one was two years or a year prior. So you kind of talk me through that game and your thoughts following it. Yeah, you know, we, we played well offensively. We struggled at times uh, defensively in that game. I mean, they only punted one time. Uh, that was the number five offense or the number five ranked team in the country, mm -hmm. the number one ranked offense in the country uh, going into that game. So um, nobody stopped them, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I was really pleased with our offensive uh, effort. Uh, very productive. We averaged on nearly eight yards of play wow. against what, the number five ranked team of the nation. So we moved the ball exceptionally well that day. Um, shot ourselves in the foot with uh, really some self-inflicted turnovers, mm -hmm. uh, which hadn't been... Uh, you know, we hadn't been doing that up until that point. So, but there was three plays in a row that really tilted that football mm -hmm. game and gave put our defense on some short fields as well, which made it uh, all the more tougher. So, mm -hmm. uh, we played well there against Mankato offensively, and then you you know, it's probably in your notes there, mm -hmm. but Parker, but uh, it was the exact opposite tale the following week against Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. And like with that Mankato game, as a team, you guys had a very good offensive. You brought up very good offensively. But especially running the ball, you guys ran for almost 300 yards, four touchdowns, you know, in a game where the quarterbacks kind of struggled. How crucial was it to get that running game going to help keep you guys in the game? Well, I mean, we're a run first offense. Our quarterbacks didn't struggle. I mean, you might look at the stat line mm -hmm. as far as the passing stats and say it's struggle. That's not a struggle. It's intentional. We, we're going to run the ball first. We're a run based program, a run based offense. Uh, that's by design. So. Um, when you can control the ball, control the line of scrimmage, you got a good chance to, to the, your best chance to win the football game. And then obviously keep the other team's offense off the field, which was mm -hmm. part of the game plan of going into that Mankato game. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's our formula. That's got to be our formula. We're going to be different. We're not going to look like uh, the Green Bay Packers mm -hmm. or Minnesota Vikings. We're going to do it our way. And uh, we're in year one. You know, we, mm -hmm. we easily could be sitting right here right now, two and two. We've lost two one score games. Mm -hmm. And if we were two and two right now here at Minot State with the history of this program, everyone would think we invented sliced bread <laughs> or canned beer. But, you know, we're, we're sitting here at 0 and 4 and, and we're close. You know, mm -hmm. we're really close to getting this thing turned around, but it's going to take time. It, it's hard to turn a football program around. It's like a battleship, it takes time. Um, like I said, unless you, you're Dion or you're Colorado and you got mm -hmm. the NIL deal and your son's one of the best players in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, one last question about that, that Mankato game. You know, obviously, loss, never good. You don't want to do that. But how happy were you overall with the way this very young team played against such a highly ranked team that we also kind of compared to, like, the Georgia, Alabama, this conference? Yeah, I was, I, like I said, I was, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, one, let, let's start with there's no, no moral victories in this sport. Like, you're mm -hmm. playing to win. Our guys mm -hmm. are, are competing to win. At, at some point, we will expect to win. Uh, but we just have a, you know, our mentality is not there yet to close out games and to win games. It, and it just takes time. It takes recruiting. It takes culture. Uh, we're on our way there, but we're not there yet. And so uh, it, was a, it was a good step against a good team. Uh, we've got a long ways to go to be the type of team we want to be. Mm -hmm. You know, and last week I kind of touched on, or you kind of touched on it earlier. Um, very different game than the Mankato game. A lower scoring, seven to nothing loss to Sioux Falls. So, kind of, what were your thoughts following that game, where your team didn't have the success that you may have wanted them to have? Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, you you want to win. I mean, mm -hmm. you're playing to win. That's why you get on the buses and the scoreboards are on. You know, you're keeping score. So, 
uh, it's hyper competitive world we're in. Sioux Falls, is, that's a proud program. You know, to go on the road, uh, to be in a one score game, to have every opportunity to win that game. Uh, that's a team that's won national championships there at Sioux Falls. Like, we haven't here. Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, that's what that game came down to. They made a few more plays than we did. We had plays there to score touchdowns. We missed some guys open. We fumbled the ball going in to score. Um, it could have been a lot different football game. We could have won that game by two or three touchdowns just as easily as we lost it by one. Mm -hmm. uh, we played phenomenal defense. It's the best our defense has played. I believe it's the lowest scoring output of an opposition since 2011. Wow. Right? So, like, our deep, seven, giving up seven points is a phenomenal effort by our defense. Coach Brennan, our defensive staff, had a great plan. Our kids have bought into it. We had some great efforts uh, across the board defensively. So, I was really excited to see that. And it was very similar feeling after the game, the Mankato game. We're like, wow, we played really well on one side, not quite good enough on the other side. Um, you know, and so hopefully you know, we have yet to play a complete football game. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to today against Wayne State is to play a complete football game as a team, offense, defense, and the kicking game. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up the, the defense playing well because I also had that down. Very strong showing defensively. You know, four sacks and two turnovers, and obviously the only, only the seven points allowed is – great for any defense i mean i think we kind of touched on about how happy were you with your defense's performance after a tough loss to mankato coming out and only allowing seven points yeah it was a tremendous effort like i said i think there's a great plan i think our guys have bought into the plan i think we get some guys flying around making plays our, we control the game up front in the line of scrimmage with uh, lafayette bade emmett espino um, Ryan Tenholsher made some plays off the edge. We need him to do that. Carson Psycho at, at middle linebacker made a ton of plays. And then uh, you know, Nyla Miller Levi played, I thought was his best game outside a corner. And then there was a matchup there that you know, we needed him to win, and he did by and large. Isaiah Bigby is, is probably the bell cow of our defense uh, throughout the whole year, played well. So a lot of guys stepped up. Uh, you know, Connor Raceman was his first time ever on the field, a true freshman. And I think Connor played 36 snaps and had like five, six tackles. Wow. Like you guy got his first shot to play, took advantage of that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So there was guys all over the place defensively flying around. Uh, and like I said, we're going to need to keep it up. We got a big challenge today with Wayne State. That's, mm -hmm. This is one of the better offenses and arguably the best quarterback in the conference that uh, we're facing today, a back-to-back -back conference player of the week on offense the last two weeks of this quarterback here today. Yeah, and kind of looking at that Wayne State game today, you know, I know you brought up earlier to me before the show that you got some key injuries on the team. So how are you guys kind of maybe shifting your game plan? I don't necessarily know if you'll do that, but how are you planning for a tough team like this with some of those key guys out? Yeah, I mean, it's that point of the season where you start losing a few guys, bumps, bruises, or, or things more significant than that. So, um, it's a, but football's a game of attrition. It's next man up, and that's just mm -hmm. the way it works in college football. It's a physical game, so you're not going to be full speed after week one typically. Mm -hmm. So we're hanging in there. We, we're not playing quite with a full deck, certainly offensively right now. Um, but, you know, nobody's going to feel sorry for you. This mm -hmm. game is going to kick off at 1 o'clock regardless. So yeah. I mean, we're excited, and we're excited to go play. And then when someone goes down, it's like, like it just happened on defense last week. Someone goes down, someone else has an opportunity to step up and, and get their shine on, and it's time to go make a play. Yeah, and I mean, how crucial is this experience? I know you brought up Connor Ratesman last week. First time ever seeing the field. How crucial has that experience been for guys like him and even guys today that are going to have to step up with some definitely some big starters out? Yeah, you know, I mean, Miles West as a true freshman has played tremendous football this year. We're going to have to lean on him, you know, even more so in the, in the backfield. You look at Aiden Shoemate started every game at left tackles, a true freshman. We've got a bunch of young guys out mm -hmm. there uh, to include some of our transfers. This is our first time here and first time in our systems to play. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're growing, you know, we're growing as a team. We need these guys to take advantage of the experience, not only today, but through the rest of the year. Keep the arrow pointed up, keep getting better and better, hopefully and on the right end of the scoreboard a few times this year. And then uh, I would expect, you know, not looking too far ahead, but all this experience is going to pay off down the road mm -hmm. uh, with all these young guys getting a lot of action. Yeah, and I just got one last question for you today. And I mean, it's something we brought up last time we spoke, is that you're rebuilding a program and you're basically at ground zero this year. You know, at basically the halfway point of your first season here in Minot. You know, how do you think the team has been progressing and how excited are you for the future with such a young, inexperienced team? 
Yeah, you know, I, I am. I'm really excited. I'm excited about the direction we're headed. It's year one is in, in these rebuilds. Uh, it's it's painful, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's growing pains. There's lessons to be learned. It's not easy. Uh, and everyone's doing everything together for the first time, coaches included, mm -hmm. uh, by and large. And so we're growing and working through together, but everyone's working hard. Our guys have kept uh, the players, our leadership council has done a phenomenal job with our locker room. Like, you know, there's no flinch in this group. They, nobody sacked their bats yet. So mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're working at it. We're trying to get it right. Uh, we got to keep adding to our roster uh, in the recruitment and mm -hmm. development of the program as well and get some more good players in here. And uh, it's a process. It takes two, three, four years mm -hmm. until you get it where you want it to be. Yeah, uh, but absolutely. right now, we're working towards it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you joining us today. I know you're a busy guy, so you've got to get going. But once again, this has been head coach Ian Shields for the Minot State Beavers football team. Big game today at 1 o'clock, Energy Day against Wayne State College. Be sure to be there at Herb Parker Stadium. Once again, this is the Saturday Showdown. We are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to be previewing some very big NSIC matchups for you today. So don't go anywhere. Here, roll beers. <laughs> Thank you to all of our underwriters. Trinity Health is a comprehensive healthcare system based in Minot, North Dakota. Fiance, with all your prom and bridal needs. Located in downtown Minot. KCJB 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. KIZZ FM Z94, playing today's hit music. Mix 99.9, .9, Minot's music mix. SRT, offering a number of services including phone, TV, internet, and security. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's classic hits. KZPR 105.3 FM, Minot's rock station. East End, where the poor is worth so much more, located in downtown Minot. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Nice impressions. No job is too big or too small. Located in downtown Minot. MSU Beavers Hockey. Online info at msubeavers.com. Forward communication. Connecting professionals in the Midwest. El Azteca, authentic Mexican food on North Broadway near the airport. MSU Theater Department, year-round entertainment. Red and Green, MSU's student-run newspaper. MSU Bookstore, for all your campus needs. My Not Nutrition Addiction, offering healthy smoothies and meal replacements on the go. H Bar B Construction, for all your oil field needs. Bears Cat Donuts, located on Broadway across from Minot State Campus. Hello and welcome back to the Saturday Showdown brought to you by Marcos Pizza. You know, it was a great interview with Coach Shields. I'm looking forward to watching that game today. But now that we are back, I am joined by a brand new student here at Minot State, baseball player Gage Eastlick. And Gage, I hear you got some pretty big NSIC information for us today. So what do you got? Yeah, pretty big week for the NSIC. You've got some big games coming up to go take a look at. And honestly, really good matchups this mm -hmm. week. It's going to be fun. Absolutely. So let's get straight into that. Heading into week five of the 2023 season, four teams still have their perfect record intact. Bemidji State University, Augustana University, and Univers University of Minnesota Duluth, as well as Minnesota State University of Mankato, all have perfect 4-0 records. Wayne State College sits at 3-1, and and Winona State University of Sioux Falls and Minnesota State University Moorhead are all 2-2. Two two. 
Northern State University, Southwest Minnesota State University, and Concordia University St. Paul all sit near the bottom with a 1-3 record. Now, there are only two teams this season yet to get a win, with Minot State University and University of Mary both being 0-4. Week 5 of the NSIC season looks to be the most exciting yet. As we hit the halfway mark for the year, the biggest matchup of the week will go down in Bemidji, Minnesota. The number four ranked Minnesota State University Mankato Mavericks will be hosted by the number nine ranked Bemidji State University Beavers. The University of Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs will be playing host to Winona State University. The Minot State Beavers will be looking to get their first win of the season when they take on Wayne State College here in Minot. Our last matchup of the day takes us to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, with the, the Cougars host the undefeated Augustana University of Vikings. Very little has changed around the NSIC so far as we take a look at some statistical leaders. Minnesota State University Moorhead Dragons quarterback Jack Strand still sits atop the NSIC in both passing yards and passing touchdowns with no sign of slowing down. Another Dragon, Gage Florence, still leads the NSIC in receptions. Now there is a new leader in receiving touchdowns, however, as Bemidji State Dell Duncan Busby has overtaken Moorhead's Brady Perryman. Now looking on the defensive side of the ball, there has been no change since our last show. Bemidji State defensive lineman Marcus Hansen leads the NSIC in sacks, as well as tackles for loss. Clay Schnuffner, excuse me, Schnuffner, Clay Schnuffner, Schuffner from Winona State leads the conference in tackles from Jacob Bird from Wayne State College is the leader in interceptions. Now, pretty big news there going on in the NSIC. I'm looking really, I'm really looking forward to this week to see how the games go this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm personally really looking forward to that Bemidji State Mankato game. Obviously, number four at number nine, two very tough teams, and kind of like Coach compared a couple weeks ago. This is kind of like a Georgia Bama Alabama game. Two very tough teams. That this is, I mean, I, I could say it's a very good test for a playoff, a competition, and obviously Moorhead. They're leading. Their offense has been crazy. Gage Florence, Jack Strand still leading the conference in all kinds of passing and receiving stats. But don't go anywhere. We're going to take one more quick break. And when we come back, Gage and I are going to be going over our Hot Topic segment. So like I said, don't go anywhere. You're watching the Saturday Showdown brought to you by Marcos Pizza. Hello and welcome back to the Saturday Showdown brought to you by Marcos Pizza. It's been a great show so far. Had a big interview with Coach Shields today and obviously the NSIC segment, NSIC segment which Giyu just went over. Very exciting stuff. But without further ado, we're just going to jump right into our Hot Topic segment. we got a lot of stuff to cover today. And we're going to start with Minot State football. You know, last week they lost 7 to nothing to the University of Sioux Falls where it wasn't obviously not the game you want. I kind of touched on that with Coach Shields. Offense didn't really get enough done, obviously, to put some points on the board. But what were some of the what was the game looking like for the Beavers last week? Well, last week, as we all know, the game ended seven to nothing, and the defense was really showing out that game with 
Emmett Espino had seven tackles and two sacks and three tackles for losses on the wow. game. You know it's a big game when the defense is going on. So moving on, Carson Keiko, nine tackles, two total tackles for losses and one sack. You got to know, you got to realize that when the defense is going that strong, you got to put some uh, mm -hmm. run, excuse me, points on the board for the football team. Yeah, the offense really has to take advantage of the, what the defense is giving them. And my United States defense definitely played really well. Um, Dawson McCleary, if you look at the stats, doesn't look great. I know Coach Shields touched on it. That's kind of what they want him to do. They're not really a pass-first team. Only four for 14 for 38 yards and interception. So when you look at it on paper, it doesn't look great, obviously. But the running game was good. 46 carries for 156 yards. Um, Evan Lovett, Miles West kind of led that. And USF didn't have their best game, obviously. They were really productive on the ground. But they didn't really do a lot else, obviously. Only putting seven points on the board. Well, when you have a defense like Minot does, especially in that game, it's kind of hard to get the defense or the offense rolling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, moving into this week, I just really want Minot State to keep up with that pressuring on the defense and hopefully score some more touchdowns this week. Yeah, and kind of looking at this week's game against Wayne State College, they're three and one, so definitely one of the top teams in the NSIC. Last time these two teams played, it did not go well in Minot State's favor. Uh, Wayne State won that game, forty-nine to ten. Um, quarterback Nick Bowen had a really great game. 9 for 14, 217 yards and two touchdowns. And on top of that, he had 13 carries for 100 yards and a touchdown. So big dual threat quarterback that could definitely give Minot State some problems. Absolutely. And with this week's game, obviously we got to get the passing game going. Yes. Passing game's not there. It's going to be all controlled by the run game. And if we can get more you know, downfield tosses and actually getting the ball rolling, I think they have a good shot to actually win this game. They do, and I think it's... A it's a weird game when you look at it when it comes to like rankings in the, in the NSIC. You know, Minot State's averaging the least amount of passing yards per game with only 84, but Wayne State is the worst passing defense in the conference. They're allowing almost 300 yards a game. So it'll be interesting to see which one of those kind of takes the step up and actually shows up. And, you know, Wayne State, while they're allowing that many yards, they lead the conference in interceptions. You know, I know you brought up earlier, Jacob Bird has six of the team's eight interceptions, so he's, he's definitely been giving offenses problems. Absolutely, and one thing to think about here is when they're playing Wayne State today is you've got to stop Nick Bone. He has, is elite dual threat quarterback, and he's got 1,147 passing yards on the year so far, which is second for the NSIC. Pretty big quarterback back there. Yeah, and he, he's been putting up stats, getting in the end zone a lot, has four rushing touchdowns, which is great, great touchdown to interception ratio. He's definitely been helping Wayne State win a lot of these games. But if you're Minot State, another key to the game is you have to dominate the line of scrimmage. You know, Wayne State, they've only allowed four sacks this year, which is fifth best, but they also only have five sacks on the defensive side. So they're not allowing pressure, but they're also not very productive at getting pressure of their own. And, you know, Minot State, they have six sacks, or they've allowed six sacks, and they have nine on defense of their own. So it'll be kind of interesting to see which line kind of takes that step up and actually not really dominates the game, but kind of sets the tone for the game and controls it. And Minot State, they're also a really good rushing team. They're allow, I mean, they have, I think, 270 rushing yards per game on offense, which is awesome, but they're going against a really stout rushing defense that Wayne State has. Absolutely, and with their rushing defense, they need to kind of be able to Go both ways here with the ball. I mean, we mentioned it earlier, but if you can't get the passing game up, it's going to be a tough game for the Beavers. So they really got to get something going early in the first half. Absolutely. And now kind of moving on from Minot State football, we're going to take a really quick, I won't say preview, quick look at some high school football around the area. The Velva Drake, Animus Garrison Aggies are now 7-0 and after defeating the then 3-3 three and -three Stanley Blue Jays 60-20 to last night in Velva. Really big game for the Aggies. I believe it was their homecoming game against not a great Stanley team. It's a good homecoming game to have right what? there, I can tell you that. <laughs> and then you kind of look, Bishop Ryan, very close to Minot State. They went and played Delax Burlington, ended up losing 14-8. to Very stout defensive game, kind of similar to that Minot State USF game. But that could be a playoff matchup. You never know. Delax Burlington and Bishop Ryan are most likely both going to make the playoffs. And then Minot High traveled all the way to West Fargo to play the West Fargo Cheyenne Mustangs. Unfortunately, did not come out with a win. They lost 28 to 20. <sighs> Tough matchup there. That's not, not something you want to have, especially with a close game like that. Two good teams. I mean, Minot and West Fargo, both five and one on the season. So you got to make something happen there, especially with a tight game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, 
kind of looking past that now other college football around the region there's some big matchups today and funny enough it's North Dakota against South Dakota in both of the ones we got North Dakota State hosting the University of South Dakota hosting the University of South Dakota today kickoff at one o'clock North Dakota State North Dakota State still sitting at that number two position in the FCS ranking so that could be a very good game here in Fargo or there in Fargo Definitely, especially with North Dakota being 3-0. and They're going to want to hold that, that record as long as they possibly can. So they're going to be playing their tail off today to make it 4-0. and Yeah, and then you look at, go a little bit farther up to Grand Forks. University of North Dakota is going to be traveling to play South Dakota State University down in Brookings. Fighting Hawks, are, their only loss of the year was to an FBS team. They lost 42-18 to to Boise State two weeks ago. Big loss for them. But they're playing the number one ranked FCS team in the country, so that could be... That'll be a really big test for the Fighting Hawks, and I think if they can come out and sh have a really good game, it's going to prove well come playoff time. Absolutely, and let's move on to Minot State Sports, actually. Uh, the men's hockey team had their first home game of the season yesterday, and I don't know if you were paying attention to it, but it was a really good game. I, I got to go to my first hockey game of all time, and I definitely loved going, and I'm going back for sure. Um, they defeated Liberty University 3-2 to two out after a shootout, and the first three shots were taken from both teams we're all, we're all missed, and the goalies blocked all of them, excuse me, saved all of them. And with the last shot of the night, um, Minot State landed their first and only goal of shootouts and ended up winning the game 3-2. to two. Wow. Definitely, I mean, a big night for Minot State, obviously. First home game, like you said. It was free admission to everyone, I believe, because they raised their national championship banner. Wish I could have been there. I'm sure the Mesa was packed, especially with students. Everyone loves to go out and support the Beavers. Kind of taking a look at women's hockey for Minot State. They're currently sitting at 0-1-0. and um, They lost yesterday 3-1 to to Midland University. Not a great showing for them, but I know long season. And they're definitely going to be looking to get back to that national championship game, which they lost last year. They do play today against Midland University at 4 o'clock. Absolutely. And looking back at that women's hockey game yesterday, uh, in the closing stages of the third period, the score was at 2-1. to And... Then there was a late goal by Midland to really put the game out of reach for the Beavers. So tough outing, but you know they have a game today. They can really make it up today if they uh, put on a show. Mm -hmm. And then kind of looking, we got two more sports. You know, we'll talk about soccer. They're four, three, and one on the year. So winning record always great. I know our soccer team's always been really good. You know, last Sunday was their last game. They tied one to one with Minnesota State University Mankato, and they do play again tomorrow against Augustana at noon. Good showing for the soccer team. I'm hoping they can make the playoffs again this year and hopefully bring home a national championship. Absolutely. I mean, early in the season when they started their season going on forward, they uh, won their first two matches, I believe, and they were looking pretty strong with, uh, I, th I believe it was four goals to start the year on two games. Uh, they just got to come back and really work, work to try to get back up in the points and really win the next mat couple matches to really uh, solidify their, their talent. Yeah, and they just rounded out really quick. Volleyball, unfortunately, two and eleven on the year. They've been really struggling. They lost three to nothing to Southwest Minnesota State University yesterday, but they're playing again today against Minnesota State University Mankato in the dome, and that game's actually going on right now as we're sitting here talking, which is big for this Beavers team. Might have to go out there before the football game tonight. Looks like a fun matchup. Absolutely. Well, Gage, I appreciate you joining me today. It has no been problem. a great episode of the Saturday Showdown. Had a great interview with Coach to start the episode off. Then you took over for the NSIC segment, which was really insightful. And obviously, we had a lot of information to cover for this Hot topic segment. But yeah, this has been the Saturday Showdown brought to you by Marco's Pizza. I'm your host, Parker Stria. And I'm your co-host, Gage Eastlick. And don't, we look forward to our next episode, which should be, I believe, in two weeks. Minot State's next home game. So, once again, this has been the Saturday Showdown brought to you by Marcos Pizza.